Hi computer arts students, it's Miss Taylor again. This lesson is for the foreground. So we're jumping down towards the middle of the page on your Photoshop Basics packet and we're going to continue with number eight, make a new layer. Now in order to make a new layer, we're going to go to our layers palette. Right next to your garbage can, there's a little button here with a square that kind of looks like there's a, a tab being pulled up. We want to click that. And you'll notice now that there's a blank layer on top of your background layer, your raised layer, and then your blank layer. Since we're on the layers palette, let's go ahead and start organizing our layers and label them. So layer one, we're going to click right on the letters, and let's go ahead and label that background. The more organized your layers, the easier it is going to be to make modifications later on. Let's do the same with layer two, double clicking right on the letters, and let's label that raise. Since we're creating the foreground, let's label layer three, foreground. Now we're going to do a lot of the same things that we did with the raise in the background, but we're going to be reversing the direction. So let's grab our polygonal lasso tool again. And we're going to make a shape very similar to kind of a wide house with a roof. I'm going to click about two-thirds of the way down on the canvas and just angle it upward. Bring it back down on the other side. And you'll notice that all of my anchor points, the areas where I'm clicking and turning, are outside of the canvas. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill it with that brown color that you see on the foreground. We're going to use number nine, Edit Fill Color. You'll find your Edit up on the menu bar, fill about halfway down. We're going to click on Color, and up will come our color picker. Now, brown is in the orange family, so we'll want to take our color slider, find orange, and then find a brown right down in this area. I want a lighter brown, so I'm going to put it up there. Click OK, and there you have your brown. I want to deselect, so Command D. And then I'm going to repeat the rays the same way that I did up in the sky, but down on the foreground. So I'm going to stay on my foreground layer and repeat that same process that I did with the rays in the sky. So I think I'll start right here and I'm just going to keep bringing it back to center. And this technique will make it look like the rays are casting kind of a shadow or the area between the rays are casting a shadow. Now when I'm done with the right side, I'm going to bring this side back to where I began and close up that gap. You have to click where you started. All right, now I'm ready to fill it again. So I'm going to repeat number nine, edit, fill, this time, I'm going to bring the brown down a little bit and darken it. Here's my current brown. This will be my new brown. Command D. Now you'll notice in the poster that there's some texture on the ground. So we're going to go ahead and add that now by double clicking right over here. We don't want to click on the words because as you already know, that will change the name of the layer. So we're going to move our cursor over here and double click. This brings up what's called your layer style palette. Over here on the left hand panel, you'll see texture. We want to go ahead and click on that. Now when you begin, you might only have these three available. If you'd like to upload all of the other textures, you can click on this little arrow here and load them all up right here. You'll just simply click on one and then append. If you click OK, 
all of the other ones will disappear. So again, when you come in, you'll probably only have these two. I find the best texture for this ground is in the rock patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and click on rock patterns, append, and just click around and find a nice bumpy rock texture. I think I like this first one. Once you click on that one, you can scale it. You can make it really coarse or fine, and you can increase the depth of each individual texture bump. Click OK. And there you have it. There's your textured foreground um, with the rays. And you will have three layers now at this point. Uh, thank you for listening. And the next lesson will be on the globe.